Um, it's a pleasure to be opening up the conference this morning. It wasn't supposed to be me, it was supposed to be Rachel Halford, the CEO of the Hepatitis C Trust, who unfortunately has been called away for a family emergency. I know Rachel would have very much liked to have been here this morning, and I also have been told that we're filming all of the sessions this morning um, and throughout the day, and so people who haven't been able to make it can catch up afterwards, and I know Rachel would appreciate the ability to be able to do that. I'm quite emotional today. Um, <clears throat> as Hugh mentioned, this conference has grown enormously over the years. I think myself, I've been to every London Joint Working Group conference. Um, and it's, it's encouraging to know that there's so many people dedicated to improving and often saving the lives of people affected by Hepatitis C. The Hepatitis C Trust, um, the London Joint Working Group and many others have worked very hard to bring us to where we are today. Key to a lot of this work has been the work of Charles Gore, who's probably going red right now, as I mentioned his name, um, helped to found the Hepatitis C Trust and worked tirelessly at a policy level to ensure that there's been system change so that people who needed to be tested were given the right information, armed with the right information about the virus, given the opportunity to get tested, that everyone with the virus was able to access treatment, in services that were fit for purpose for those particular patients. And as many of you know, some of, most of the patients affected by hepatitis C struggle to um, adhere to some of the more traditional pathways of care. Um, the role of the Hepatitis C Trust is evolving. Um, <clears throat> I feel that we're at a pivotal point in the history of hepatitis C at the moment. Um, I think we're at a place where we know what needs to be done now and it's just a case of getting on and eliminating the virus. We know what's got to be done. Um, I've worked for the Hepatitis C Trust for nine years and it still makes me proud to visit all areas of the country and meet patients who have been supported for our, by our helpline for longer than I've been at the Trust. Um, <clears throat> and even more pleasing to meet more and more patients now who have successfully cleared the virus and been able to really get on with their lives. My journey with Hepatitis C started long before I joined the Trust. I was diagnosed personally with Hepatitis C in the 90s. Um, <clears throat> at the time, I was um, in the grips of drug and alcohol dependency. Um, when I was told that I had Hepatitis C, the diagnosis just meant one thing to me, and that was, you know, it's going to affect my drink and, and, and drug use. And having the limited street knowledge that I had in those days, I understood that um, it affected my liver and that if I carried on um, doing what I was doing to myself, I would not possibly last that much longer. If I was diagnosed today, the diagnosis would mean a totally different thing to me. I've now got a young family. <coughs> and some of that life is behind me now. Um, having been diagnosed, I was referred to see um, a specialist um, in one of the major treating hospitals in London. I think I waited about two years for that appointment to see them in those days. <clears throat> when I got to that appointment, I was told that I would not be able to access treatment um, for hepatitis C and to come back in about 18 months and have another appointment. So this kind of reinforced the message that was around that, you know, hepatitis C is not that urgent. Um, I then started, for me, it was a turning point. I, being diagnosed with hepatitis C was a, like a last straw for me. I started to turn my life um, in a different direction. It took a long time, as many of you in this room will know, um, people affected by substance abuse, how, how long that can take. Um, and I arrived in Cornwall eventually to uh, address my substance misuse and in those days it was a postcode lottery as to where you were, as to whether you could access treatment. I accessed a fantastic clinical team down there and I was given the interferon treatment, which many of you will know was, was difficult to tolerate, to say the least. But for me, I was starting a new journey and it was important for me to clear the virus. I successfully cleared the virus um, and have gone on <coughs> to work at the Hepatitis C Trust. I would like to just end by saying um, that three years ago, almost today, my son was born and the same night he was born, I lost my closest friend to Hepatitis C. 
and the, you know he he died of liver cancer, and the reason he died was because he wasn't found and offered treatment at the right time in his life. So his life could have been prevented. So that's my story, <clears throat> a bit of my story with hepatitis C. Um, I understand we've got three videos today from patients giving their experience because there are many different experiences, and I think we're going to show one of those now. Is that right? Thank you.